everybody and welcome back to the Zodcast. This is going to be episode number 22 and as promised this is going to be a subscriber only edition. I know it's taken a little time to get back on to things but uh, hopefully I'll get things back rolling soon and we'll have a lot of new episodes coming out. Today is May 31st 2021. It's Memorial Day so please uh, keep your thoughts towards uh, all our fallen service members who died giving us our freedom and it's definitely something that uh, is near and dear to me and uh, hope everyone had a good Memorial Day but let's get right into it first I wanted to uh, alert people to that there, there is a new upload on the Zodiac files and of course this is on Planet X Films YouTube channel and this is going to be a uh, part two of the death of Ray Davis of course uh, Ray Davis was the cab driver who was murdered in 1962 and uh, is a possible uh, Zodiac uh, victim. And this was, uh, the connection here was brought up by a woman named Christy Hawthorne, who I believe is a writer there in Oceanside. And she's the one that first uh, brought this case to light and how it could possibly be connected to uh, being a Zodiac crime. And she is interviewed in this video and it's extremely well done by Ross and company over there at Planet X Films. So uh, definitely go check it out. A link to this uh, film is going to be in the description below. So please go over to uh, Planet X Films and the Zodiac Files. And remember to hit the subscribe button when you do. Because um, after this edition of the part two of the Ray Davis murder, he's going to be covering uh, the Sherry Joe Bates murder, obviously in Riverside in 1966. So you don't want to miss that. So jumping into all things Zodiac, of course, um, lately I was thinking about the uh, Zodiac, my name is Cypher, of course, there's a picture of it on the screen, and I've heard, uh, you know, some talk about this before, and read some articles about how these three symbols, the ones shown circled in red, they look like uh, number eights with circles around them, could be representing the symbol of Taurus, the, uh, the Zodiac symbol of Taurus, and how, you know, maybe the Zodiac was a Taurus uh, under his birth sign. And uh, as you know, Don Cheney's birthday is April 25th, 1934, and he is a Taurus. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, you see the, the, the blue symbol circle that, you know, some uh, speculate that could be Aries or, you know, Taurus going in Aries or whatever date that would be. I think that was April 22nd, something like that. But I uh, always thought the Taurus symbols were uh, interesting, being that, that, that Don Cheney is a Taurus with the April 25th birthday. And it also made me run across an article about how the majority of serial killers are under the sign of Taurus or born under the sign of Taurus. So uh, I thought that was that was interesting how uh, so many serial killers uh, fall under that birth sign. So uh, if Don is the Zodiac, and I think he is, uh, he would definitely fall under that umbrella. Here, of course, is a better look at the shape of the Taurus symbol. So who knows if that's Taurus or not, but it could be. Um, definitely looks like it, and it looks like it meant something to the writer of the uh, the Zodiacs, My Name is Cypher. So uh, it's definitely something to contemplate. And here's a picture of one of the articles that I read about that. Uh, it says, majority of serial killers are Taurus study claims. And this one was from the New York Post. If you Google that, you can find other uh, articles on that one. I think this one's fairly recent. I think it's uh, February 2021, this particular one that I'm showing on the screen. So it's definitely something worth looking into. Uh, I don't know why that is, uh, that they fall under that particular uh, Zodiac sign. But maybe there's something something in uh, in the stars about that. I don't know, but it's definitely worth checking out. So I haven't had a whole lot of time lately to do some real deep research, but uh, I am working on some new things that are going to be coming out in the next few weeks about uh, Coach Don Chaney. Uh, nothing throws me off of that trail, and any new suspect that comes out of that, the Zodiac, uh, I don't lose sleep over personally because I, I know who it is. Uh, you know, it's another thing to convince other people, but I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, I just know what I'm looking at. So one thing I was looking at recently was a little more into Sandy Panzarella. And, I, and to this date, I, I really don't think Sandy Panzarella was involved with the crimes. I think it was a connection between Donald Lee Cheney, of course, and Arthur Lee Allen. But uh, Panzarella does interest me, though. He was definitely a very complex guy and highly, highly intelligent. Uh, I can see why him and Don got along pretty well because they were both really smart guys. But here's a, an ad from the newspaper 
Uh, from during the time that Don Cheney was working for Sandy Panzarella, of course, at Science Dynamics Corporation down in Torrance, California. And I thought some of these symbols that, uh, that were kind of interesting, the logos for uh, Science Dynamics there, you see at the uh, top left-hand side, you see the, the, the weird symbols. They look like screw heads and the one that looks kind of like the Zodiac symbol at your top right course i thought that was interesting and i'm not one of these people that just looks like you know finds the zodiac symbol and everything uh you know people talk about the uh the ford zodiac car of course that was mostly sold in europe and how the uh the the logo of the ford zodiac car was a uh looked like the zodiac symbol it really doesn't it just it doesn't it's 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 a rectangle number one it's just that symbol up there for Science Dynamics looks closer to the Zodiac cross circle logo to me than a, than a Ford Zodiac. And then every time someone says that, I think they're just trying to pull away from the fact that uh, it came from the watch. Sorry, it came from the, the Zodiac Killer got his name from Arthur Lee Allen's wristwatch. It's that simple. The symbol and the, the name rarely ever collide like that as they do in that wristwatch. Of course, somebody would say, well, everybody had a Zodiac wristwatch in 1969. Uh, that's not true. It's just not. I mean, they were popular with skin divers. Arthur Lee Allen was a skin diver. That's why his mother got him that watch for Christmas of 1967 and just thought it'd be easy to get uh, her younger son, Ron, the same gift. So she just bought two of them. So that, hence the watch. But, you know, I don't see the symbol in everything, but it is it, it is kind of interesting when you see something similar, of course, in a logo for a company like Science Dynamics. But I thought that was pretty neat to at least see that uh, that ad for Science Dynamics at the time that Don was working there. And here's a picture of uh, Sandy Panzarella. I'm not sure what year this comes from. This has never been published before, and uh, that's kind of my one of my uh, my uh, go-to things to find difficult photographs that people have never seen. Well, there's one. There's uh, Santo Paul Sandy. Of course, he went by Panzarella. Is wearing all black, and he's got the hat on. Real nice-looking guy. And uh, Panzarella had a lot of demons from what I know about him. Uh, and I don't know why. Nice looking guy and he was highly successful. He wasn't this uh, gifted underachiever or anything like you could say Don Chaney was. Don Chaney very smart but he did not have success like uh, his friend Sandy Panzarella. Panzarella started Science Dynamics with uh, I think it was two friends right out of Cal Poly Pomona. Of course that's where he met Ron Allen. And uh, that's when he met Don Chaney, of course, and uh, and then met Arthur Lee Allen, too. He just didn't spend near as much time around Arthur Lee Allen as Don did, uh, but he did know him. But uh, interesting guy, Panzarella. I mean, he was a, a electrical engineer. That's why he went into that business that he did. He started Science Dynamics, computerized billing for the medical industry. Got that going in, uh, I think, 1963, 1964, when they started forming that company. Medical billing for computers. Uh, yeah, that went pretty well. I can't remember who he sold to. He sold to a, eventually sold out to a Fortune 500 company, and he stayed on as a director for a few years after he sold the company. But he made tens of millions, uh, you know, tons of money. Panzarella had never, never was hurting for money. I mean, he always had it. And, of course, you saw in the photo, nice-looking guy. I don't know why, but I can tell you I do know some things about him other people don't know. He did have severe insecurity. I don't know why. Uh, he just did. Uh, and uh, just something deep-seated in him. I don't know if it was his upbringing or not, but the guy had everything, money, looks. Uh, but he just still, uh, for some reason, was felt really insecure about himself. And, uh, you know, I might talk more about that later. But I never really saw Panzarella being involved with these crimes. Of course, uh, he was the catalyst for Don Chaney to come forward to the police about his accusations against Arthur Lee Allen in July of 1971. But, uh, you know, Panzarella pops up here and there. And uh, he's definitely worth exploring, you know, and, and, and what he, he may have known more, maybe he didn't, but uh, he's just an interesting guy and in how he plays into all of this. And of course, when I think of Panzarella and Cheney and the Zodiac crimes, I always go back to what's known as the Zodiac's Dragon Card. And uh, that was sent into the San Francisco Chronicle on April 28th, 1970. Of course, that's three days after Don Cheney's birthday of April 25th. And, uh, you know, I always thought the, the, the Dragon Card was interesting, of course, because it depicts uh, Don Quixote, uh, who's, of course, that's the character here riding on the dragon. And then uh, Santo Panza is, uh, or sorry, Sancho Panza, which is the character riding on the donkey. And, of course, that's from the book uh, Don Quixote. So here you have uh, Don Quixote, Don, and then you have uh, Sancho Panza. And maybe that could be 
Santo Panzarella. You know, the names are pretty close, so you have uh, the two guys right there maybe represented it, you know. So, uh, who knows? It could be, you know, Don Chaney thinking of those two guys uh, as these two characters, of course, from the... Uh, from the book Don Quixote, and then you can see the two characters on front of the one of the original books about Don Quixote. You have, uh, of course, Don Quixote and uh, Sancho Panza on the donkey. So maybe that's Don Chaney and Santo Panzarella. I don't know, but it's pretty interesting to to contemplate in one way or the other. And another thing that made me think of the Dragon card lately was an email I got from James, who sends me really great Zodiac stuff. He's been researching this case. For a lot longer than I have, and he sends me really thought-provoking good stuff. And of course, he leans heavy towards Don Chaney, uh, so you know I like what he sends me. But he uh, pointed out to me that in the Dragon Card, where it says where the Zodiac writes, he says, "I would like to see some nice Zodiac buttons wandering about town. Everyone else has their buttons, like Black Power, Melvin Eats Buller, etc." Well, it would cheer me up considerably if I saw a lot of people wearing my button. Of course, he's talking about the Zodiac Cross Circle logo button and uh what's interesting there is why is the zodiac depressed he says well it would cheer me up considerably and the possible reason for the zodiac being depressed as james pointed out to me is that don cheney's mother died pretty soon after the dragon card was sent she passed away in november of 1970 and she died at a pretty young age at 61 so maybe she had cancer i don't know i've read her obituary it doesn't say I, I think obituaries back in the day wouldn't really get into uh, what what killed the person, you know, whether even if it was natural causes, I don't think it would say that. Like, you know, it's more common to see that nowadays, but I think in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you didn't see that too often, what, what actually was wrong with the person. I guess the people that knew them knew, and that was good enough, but uh, as you'll see here, uh, from Find a Grave, this is uh, the the, the uh, headstone of Don Chaney, and, I mean, sorry, he died, Don's mother and his dad, but you can see... Uh, Sorry, I said 61. She died at age 62 on November 4th, 1970. So um, unless she died of natural causes, which, yeah, that can happen at 62, it's still uncommon even for the early 70s. So possibly she had cancer or she had become ill, but that could have been why the Zodiac was depressed if it was Don uh, because his mom fell ill and eventually would pass away on November 4th, 1970 at age of 62, which is still pretty young. So uh, just something to consider, and it was, it was an interesting thing that uh, James pointed out again. And here is a uh, another little find I made of another uh, excerpt from the Bakersfield, California newspaper, and this is where Western actor... Uh, we'll pay honor to scouts, and of course the man pictured here is none other than Tim Holt, and we all know about the Tim Holt uh, Death Wheel comic book connection to the Zodiac, of course that was discovered by Tahoe 27, and you know, I'm just saying that this is what's so uh, great about Bakersfield, California, because you had all the elements there. Um, I don't think Larry Kane is going to run across a whole lot of Tim Holt back in Brooklyn, okay? That's just, that's all I'm saying. Uh, Bakersfield, California was a great breeding ground for this stuff. I mean, it was a, a lot of uh, country western music in Bakersfield, uh, Buck Owens and all that kind of stuff that, that came later. But here you have Tim Holt coming, and I've talked about this before, where he came down for a, for a uh, Boy Scout meeting. Of course, Don Cheney was a Boy Scout in Bakersfield. And uh, this is, I think this one happened the year prior to the other one I mentioned. And uh, Tim Holt came and did a presentation at Bakersfield High School in 1947. Of course, uh, Don Cheney was a student at Bakersfield High School then. And here's Tim Holt right there at his high school uh, talking to the Boy Scouts, which he was. I don't know if he was there, but that's in his high school auditorium and talking to the Boy Scouts. So you know, what are the odds? Come on. I mean, here's Tim Holt at his high school. And it's just Bakersfield has everything you need. You've got Red Ryder and uh, his little sidekick, Little Beaver, introducing the, the movies, you know, at the local movie theater. You have Red Ryder comic strip in the Bakersfield, California. You have Earl Price's ciphers. Interesting about Earl Price's ciphers, he didn't call them cryptograms. He always used the word cipher. People always thought that was interesting how the Zodiac liked to use the word cipher instead of cryptogram. Technically, they were cryptograms, but Earl Price always said cipher. So Zodiac like Cipher could have been influenced by good old Earl. And of course, Don Chaney could walk to Earl Price's shop from his home at 1308 M Street in Bakersfield. Uh, here's, of course, is a movie poster for uh, Tim Holt in Fighting Frontier. 
And, um, you know, uh, one of the screenplay writers for a lot of the, the Westerns back in the day was a guy named Jay Bitten Chaney. I don't know if he's related to Don Chaney or not, but he could have just liked the name. But uh, this particular Tim Holt feature, uh, the screenplay was written by none other than Jay Bitten Chaney, same spelling, C-H-E-N-E-Y. So just thought that was interesting, too. But, you know, you've got Groucho Marx all over Bakersfield. You just got so much going on there. This is just... Stuff you're gonna like is a uh, is a young boy in a town like Bakersfield and lot you know in a lot of these other places people like to speculate maybe the Zodiac was from England or something. How is somebody in England gonna get, start getting exposed to Tim Holt for crying out loud? It's just not gonna happen. I'm sorry. Bakersfield is the place. It's got it all. Everything you need to become Zodiac and influenced by comic books, Red Rider, all this kind of stuff. Earl Price. It's just it's got everything you need. Uh, hunting, of course, hunting. Hunting's very important. I, uh, I believe the Zodiac Killer was a big game hunter. Of course, Tom Cheney was a big game hunter. And speaking of uh, things like Tim Holt and Red Ryder, of course, what, what is all that? It's cowboys and Indians. Here's a picture of Don Cheney's teepee. This isn't uh, uh, a picture of one like Don Cheney's teepee. That is Don Cheney's teepee that he slept in on uh, camping excursions or long hunting trips. He liked to sleep in a Plains Indian teepee. Uh, see where I'm going? And just to continue this theme, this guy, I think it's Zodiologist.com or something, this website. I've, I've quoted from it before because it was talking about Friday Night Friar, like I mentioned, and how that was so uncommon. The Zodiac always stuck to that. He never said F-R-Y night. He always, F-R-I night. He always said F-R-Y, which I believe comes from Friar. But of course, this says here, it says, The text of the 408 character cipher suggests that the Zodiac Killer had a background in game hunting. Either he was a hunter himself or joined others on their hunt. The thrill of the hunt and the killing of living beings apparently excited him. This could be a possible indication for a career from early animal cruelty via wild game hunting to serial killer. Obviously, he got some of his inspiration from the short story The Hounds of Zaroff or following the movie The Most Dangerous Game, where basically safari hunts that were popular in the 1920s were inverted and where the hunter became the hunted. It is reasonable to assume that the Zodiac rather identified himself with the insane and megalomanic Count Zaroff instead of the hunted Rainsford. Remarkably, the name of Count Zaroff also starts with the letter Z. So that's really good stuff. Uh, I always believed the Zodiac Killer, even before I got on it, Don Cheney was a big game hunter. And Don Cheney was a big game hunter. He hunted big game in the woods. He'd go on days-long hunting trips where he shot the animals, he cooked them over coals in the woods. I know this for a fact, uh, and he did it for days. He did it not just in his childhood, like he tries to tell Tom Voight in that that uh, that interview he did with him. John Cheney was an avid hunter, you know, as long as he could walk. Not not just from childhood. The guy was an avid hunter all through the 1970s for sure, and definitely part of the 80s. So uh, he, he uh, definitely has that moniker as a big game hunter. Uh, I don't know if he went on safari or anything like that, but he would definitely hunt in Oregon, Washington State, uh, and he would go for for long periods of time. That's one of the, the theories I propose is that's why it would have been easy for him to uh, leave Pomona and tell his wife he's going hunting for a certain amount of days, either over a long weekend or a holiday like July 4th, of course, uh, Blue Rock Springs. And uh, that would be his cover, I mean, for leaving for those days. He was going hunting. Uh, of course, his son was too young to take with him at that at the time of the Zodiac murders. His son would have only been five or six years old, would have been too young to go hunting for days like that. So, uh, you know, that, that was his cover, in, in my opinion. I think that uh, that's how Don Cheney was able to leave and make the long drive to the Bay Area and do these crimes. And with the help of Arthur Lee Allen, of course, and there he is on the screen, mailing the letters for him and having some input on the letters that would just make it so so much more simple because they're just... As I always say, said before, there's just too much circumstantial evidence for Allen and Cheney together. When you put their, when you put the, the evidence uh, for both of them together, it's overwhelming. It, it, it's, it's put all the other suspects uh, added up. Can't even come close. Can't even, not even 20% of what you get between Allen and Cheney. 
circumstantially between Paradise, between Trigger Mag, between uh, Alan living at Grand Zero at 32 Fresno Street. Of course, Don Cheney had very close family friends that lived in Vallejo as well uh, that people don't know about. I do, and uh, they lived in Vallejo, very close to Arthur Lee Allen, at the t- at, you know, all during the, the uh, 60s and 70s. So they were living there during the Zodiac crime tenure. So Cheney could have been staying with these family friends just as easy uh, and avoided Arthur Lee Allen to, if that caused any suspicion. And uh, uh, that's just a, definitely something I believe because uh, Cheney was very close to this family that lived in Vallejo and it had nothing to do with Arthur Lee Allen. Uh, they just gave Cheney another place to go. Uh, if he was up there, and I'm also pretty certain that Cheney went hunting with, with members of this particular family that lived in Vallejo, and uh, some people I've talked to before know who that family is, but anyway, it's just it's just too much between these two guys, I'm always finding more and more, and then with help with people like James, uh, it's just getting better and better, and of course I'm working on some new stuff that I'm going to put out pretty soon, and I know I've been quiet for a while, but it's going to pick up again and get this new material out. And here's another uh, picture from uh, Bakersfield, California, from the Granada Theater. Of course, the Fox Theater was a big, iconic movie theater in Bakersfield, but the Granada um, showed a lot of good films as well. That was a Tim Holt film. And here's something else that James had sent me, and I and I did notice this before. I just never put it in a video, or the or my book for that matter. But here's a the picture of a hair that came from behind one of the stamps of the Zodiac letters. I think one that was sent to the Chronicle. And, uh, of course, it was a brown hair with reddish tint is how it's described. And he puts a picture up here. This is from James and shows uh, the picture that I have of Don Cheney from 1965. And you can tell that hair is just right on the mark for that color. Don Cheney's hair, of course, it's a it's a brown. Don Cheney has brown hair and it definitely looks like it has a reddish tint to it. So it's a it's a really spot on match for that hair. So uh, thanks for sending those pictures together, James, because I definitely never did that. But uh, definitely a good match. It's just like I said, there's just too much going on between Cheney and then add in Allen. It's just uh, it's overwhelming. Just too much going on. So if you want to know more about it, of course, it's in my book, Sighting In on the Zodiac Killer. And please stay tuned for more videos to come soon. Thanks.